Hello and uh, welcome. So we should get into a quick conversation with uh, my friend and uh, colleague uh, C.S. Swaminathan. Swami, as uh, all of us at Founding Fuel call him. Now, uh, Swami uh, has um, uh, is a Wipro, former Wipro hand as well. And uh, since the time uh, we have uh, started Founding Fuel, uh, personally, I have heard a lot of... Uh, Azim Premji stories uh, from uh, Swami and uh, Swami has uh, shared uh, narratives about Azim Premji, um, uh, snippets uh, from here and uh, snippets uh, about Azim Premji that I would otherwise not have heard and uh, how uh, Mr. Premji uh, has uh, shaped and molded uh, his thinking and uh, the kind of influence that he has had on uh, Swami's uh, thinking, life, and uh, career. And I think uh, uh, Mr. Premji's 75th birthday uh, is uh, as good a day as any uh, to take a trip down uh, memory lane and uh, draw some of these anecdotes uh, from uh, Swami and uh, listen to him speak in his own inimitable, inimitable style. Uh, and. Um, uh, and let's 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 just uh, dive into this conversation straight away with uh, him. Hey, Swami. So, uh, do you want do you want to just go back to uh, the days at uh, you know your days at Silicon Valley, uh, where uh, when you were, and uh, you know what were your impressions? I think uh, there are some fascinating stories you have from there, and uh, how that molded you. Yeah. Thanks, Charles. Uh, nice to be here. And it's always great to talk about uh, Wipro and Mr. Premji. Um, we used to call uh, him as AHP in our uh, internal communications. Um, so I was one of the lucky guys to uh, <clears throat> get to meet him because we, he was much more accessible in our international offices. Uh, you know, uh, because in India, uh, he had a very, very tight schedule and uh, and the number of people who used to get a chance to meet him were very, very large. Uh, so if there was any forum, uh, it was quite difficult to approach him because he was he was a celebrity of sorts among the employees, right? So there are people who will go and take selfies and uh, and all of that. And, and uh, you know, this is even before the selfie culture really started off. So people used to bring those cameras and actually have a lot of pictures taken. Some of them would, uh, you know, share it with their family. And, you know, it, it was a big event to be in the same, although you work for the same company, but, uh, you know, people held him in a really high uh, regard. So to that extent, uh, if you end up working in any of their international offices, he was much more approachable because the group, the crowds were not very large. And uh, of course, uh, he had an interest in figuring out how we were doing on our business and, uh, the feedback that he used to take from all of us directly one-on-one, -on -one, uh, that that made the whole thing a lot more uh, easy and approachable for uh, people who uh, used to work in, uh, you know, the international offices. So uh, that's, uh, I would say that uh, I've, I've had a chance to interact with him a few times, but been in many meetings where he has addressed the group uh, as, as a whole and, uh, you know, communicated his uh, philosophies and his perspectives right from, um, you know, the principles that we all know, I mean, on the day of joining, you get to know what are the principles of the pro, but then he used to make it a point to talk about it and communicate it to all of us, uh, you know, um, at every given opportunity. So th those were, those were uh, some of the benefits of being, uh, working out of those international offices. <clears throat> so, um, you know, so I do remember, uh, you know, uh, one specific instance uh, where, you um, uh, I had the opportunity to spend about uh, 40, 45 minutes with him in a car ride. And uh, one of the things that I've heard he does often is uh, he would prefer an employee to drop him at the airport. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he would prefer that uh, he hears, you know, has a conversation with them as he goes along along the ride. Um, so uh, I, was, uh, I was one of those who was nominated, picked up, I don't know how my name, name came about, but uh, I happened to be in the SAP meeting that he was attending at Palo Alto. And I, 
I the minute somebody said, would you be uh, would you be able to drop? What is SAP meeting? I'm sorry. SAP meeting. SAP. Oh, okay. SAP. Yeah, SAP has an office in Palo Alto. Um, you know where um, you know some of their top leaders uh, uh, for the U.S. geography used to be based out of, right? Um, so somebody said, you know, would you be able to drop Mr. Premji at uh, the San Francisco airport because he's headed directly from there? I said, of course, I will. I'll be happy to do that. <clears throat> so I tried to make sure my car looks uh, decent and presentable because I wasn't expecting that. So um, and then um, after the meeting was done, it was a good meeting and he was basically addressing the SAP employees. Uh, and he was making a presentation on his life. And I, I do remember that one of the things he said was uh, that he does attribute some of what his success has been to um, being at the right place at the right time. Uh, and, and he said that in, the, in that open forum, I remember that. Um, and he said that, yeah, I mean, I, I, have, I have lived by certain principles, but I also have gotten uh, some iota of luck in the entire process, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, we were coming out of that meeting and uh, I was driving him to San Francisco and uh, it was in the evening. So I had to beat the, uh, uh, you know, uh, in San Francisco to go to San Francisco, there are two main routes. So one is called the 280 and the other, is, other one is called 101. 101 is usually very crowded. So I took 280, which is longer, uh, but also has less traffic. So uh, going from... Paul Alto's, uh, Paul, going from SAP's office to 280, I have to go via the Stanford uh, University, you know. So uh, I, I mentioned to him that this is the Stanford University and he had, a, you know, obviously a smile on his face. Uh, he's, he's been there before, right? So, uh, but, uh, you know, he, he I, I, I'm trying to remember exactly what he said, but I could, uh, you know, uh, I could I could feel that he's enjoying the nature. It's it's a very beautiful place actually. You know these these places have been pretty much left to wilderness, uh, and a lot of it is just rolling hills. It's it's beautiful. Uh, and then uh, the the ride commenced, and it was perhaps about forty minutes. And he got to ask me who I was, what do I do, how has business been, you know some of the challenges I faced. Then he came around to ask me about my family. He asked me specifically about my son. What what is the plan that I have for him? Because he was very young at that time, um, and so on. So it was it was uh, it was a nice conversation as such. And then suddenly it, it I guess it dawned on him that he's going to catch a flight back home, and he was trying to get a better uh, uh, connecting flight or something, if I remember right. So he was on the call with a few other people as well, uh, you know, in the middle of it to try and see if he could get a good uh, connecting flight. And also on the back of his mind was the fact that he was expecting an upgrade because he flies business, but he tries to see if he can get an upgrade. Um, so all this was playing at the back of his mind. At the same time, he was having a nice uh, conversation with me and enjoying the the scenery outside. So that was that was a you know pretty good i, I mean I, I don't know very many people who would have got like 40 45 minutes uninterrupted time with uh, uh, with uh, wipro chairman right so that, that was a great experience yeah and uh, and uh, so i recall uh, you know this uh, the, the you know that it was quite amazing the point you made about uh, you know after dropping him at the airport what uh, happened and you know that's where that uh, whole thing about frugality came in and one of those lessons that you learned uh, you know, yeah so you know at, at wipro uh, you know uh, you know, unlike perhaps other companies, frugality is highly regarded and respected as a trait and as a quality in any manager. You know, you will not be penalized for being frugal. You will not be penalized for acting, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, negotiating that one rupee. You know, you will not be penalized uh, for any of those. Um, so, you know, I, I, I do remember perhaps in the same trip or another trip, you know, we have a negotiated rate with a hotel for about a hundred dollars. And we had uh, somebody who in his team had communicated to him that it is going to be a hundred dollars, but he checked in pretty late because we had a late evening, late night, uh, uh, you know, conversations with all our employees. And I think he checked in at around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. By the time the hotel, normally their processes, they'll sell out the rooms and uh, you know, they have a slightly different rate. So uh, he walks into the hotel and uh, I happen to be there and the lady at the counter, she doesn't know who she's dealing with actually. She said, it's going to be $135. Uh, and he said, that's no way I'm going to pay you 135 
it's hundred dollars that was communicated to me and we are going to pay you hundred dollars. And that lady doesn't know she's dealing with, uh, with the chairman of a large company. You know, she's saying, no, it's 135, take it or leave it. And we are here, you know, because we, if, if he chooses not to stay there, we have to go find another hotel for him. Right. So we told the lady, Hey, hang on, you know, we'll talk to your manager when he comes tomorrow in the morning. Right now, please accept this gentleman at hundred dollars a night. Okay, please accept him. We'll figure it out at when, it when is, everything. It's serious. I can't. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. No, no. He and 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 you know, this is this is the way you set examples, right? So I can tell the story now to anybody. You know, um, uh, this is this is how you build the team's uh, you know common agenda about what matters to a person. It's not like, uh, you know, uh, he's a different person uh, when he's on a business trip or when he's on a personal trip. I mean, he's very clear what drives him and how he, uh, how he looks at, uh, you know. So, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have privy to a lot of things that he does otherwise, but I'm just saying uh, based on these, it, it certainly drives you to say, you know what, the chairman of a company who's, you know, who's in, valued in the billions, but here he's negotiating for $35, right? Uh, it, 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 it definitely shaped the way I think about the money. And, you know, um, the thing that I have tried to internalize as part of my nine year journey at Wipro is that, you know, on one hand, we have this chairman and his family, including um, Mr. Rishad Prenji, uh, who are so uh, specific, uh, specifically focused on driving the business, very strong metrics and, you know, culture of performance and all of that run with a very shrewd you know, uh, and a business acumen, right? It's, it's, it's very tightly run company. Uh, and, you know, at the same time, they're giving away so much of money to charity, right? Uh, uh, for philanthropy, you know? Uh, and I think the reason that they get to do that is because, uh, you know, they have, they've had this vision and the best way to execute on that is to get as much uh, benefit you can get by being in business because business does reward uh, very strong performances. So, and uh, as you know, just the way the mechanics works, right? When you talk about P ratios and all of that, every, every rupee you add to the bottom line gets a multiplier in terms of valuation. And that's what as a shareholder he will get. So if you say that one rupee, uh, it can lead to 20, 30 times the value uh, when you just look at P ratios and how companies are valued, right? And people also try to game him at that point, right? I mean, that's, that's also something you, uh, within internally... Uh, well, uh, see, uh, see, uh, not not all of them. See, the, 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 there are two types of people who uh, kind of started working at Wipro, right? Because Wipro grew exponentially during the time I was there. Not all of them were uh, with, even I wasn't an early employee. There are many early employees who kind of modeled themselves on the basis of how Mr. Premji used to, uh, you know, uh, handle things, right? Uh, and there were a lot of others who came in from outside and they are coming from very, you know, we hired people from companies that used to spend a lot of money, unlimited budgets for travel and all of that as well. Right. Uh, so, you know, as the company grows, the, uh, uh, the mix of people that come in will also change because not all of them are going to grow with your company. Right. Um, so uh, when you have people from other backgrounds, you know, they, they're kind of stuck with this idea as to, you know, why, why do you guys you know, think like this? You know, uh, we are competing with the McKinsey's and the Accenture's and they have, you know, fancy everything, you know, uh, uh, why is it that in Wipro we do it this way? You know, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, it was, uh, they were cutting corners or anything, but it was about being, everybody being conscious about every rupee or every dollar that we spent, right? Um, so, yeah, of course, uh, so there were po policies like, you know, don't print uh, pages uh, that were not relevant to be shown. You know, if you have backup slides, unless it is absolutely relevant, don't print it. Uh, you know, and if you want to get your bills paid, you know, use recycled paper. I mean, these were uh, how you would try to operationalize and there would be people who perhaps uh, don't have uh, a good understanding of why, why certain ideas were used in the first place who might uh, so you know actually uh, this uh, recycled paper thing had come down from mr premji itself is it well uh, i don't know whether mr premji personally said that but uh, you know uh, it it is it, if i do remember that if it is on recycled paper your expense settlement could be faster right i uh, 
I mean, I have, I think I've used recycled paper because I'm kind of conscious about it, uh, but I don't know whether. I know, I know for a fact <laughs> for me that in dealing with you, I mean, you have yelled at me for using wet sheets of paper. So that's what I'm asking you. Yeah? No, so, so, so the, these are values that uh, I don't know whether I learned it because of being in Wipro or because I had that in me, it got accentuated with Wipro, but it stays with me. Even today, I take a lot of effort to reuse paper, for example, right? So, uh, and of course, you know, they have, <clears throat> they have uh, also taken up their uh, environmental consciousness very seriously. You know, I, I do remember an incident when the Greenpeace guys came to Wipro. I wasn't around at that time, but I heard this from uh, some of the people who are in the Wipro uh, electronics business that uh, the Greenpeace guys came and dumped a whole bunch of Wipro electronic stuff on uh, um uh, right outside the office and said that you guys aren't doing anything about it. It's e-waste. What are you guys doing about it? So I think the, that uh, Greenpeace uh, uh, demonstration of sorts outside the Wipro campus uh, really uh, um, got everybody worked up about uh, the fact that we were perhaps not paying enough attention to e-waste. So uh, quickly a committee was constituted. I think uh, Mr. Anurag Behar uh, was the person who uh, headed up that committee and uh, you know since then Wipro has been publishing a sustainability report perhaps one of the earliest in the Indian context to present such a report um, and you know I think it's been around for more than 10 years now and every year they report back on um, you know how they are doing so you know these things are uh, these things are something that is driven only at the top you know uh, and I do know through uh, some of the conversations I've had with people who interact, interacted very closely with him, uh, you know, he used to maintain a, a diary of what are the things that he needs to improve upon. And he used to get feedback from his immediate reportees on things that, uh, you know, they give feedback and uh, the ones that uh, he needs to improve upon. And he used to... Uh, ask others in the team to keep track of whether he's improving or not. Uh, you know, these are not, uh, these are not a very common uh, managerial or leadership traits that you would see, right? Uh, especially exposing that, you know, they are kind of vulnerable. Um, at the same time, uh, you know, telling the world that there's absolutely nothing wrong in being, um, you know, open about the fact that I need to learn as well. And uh, therefore, uh, I need to I need to have my milestones and goals that track all of this. And he used to use uh, the help of his team to actually help him with that process. So I mean, these are all things that uh, will stay with you. Uh, you know, if at all anybody reaches that level of uh, leadership in any company, uh, when you look back on all all of this, you you know, it gives you a it gives you a sort of a roadmap to say you know. Um, um, successful people do this. So, you know, you, you should perhaps think about it as well, you know. Um, so, that, yeah, so, 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 so is that uh, whole uh, thing, Swami, about, uh, uh, you know, uh, the green part uh, in you, the green uh, sustainability, does it, uh, do you owe that to uh, Ajin Premji? No, I, 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 I don't. Uh, I, I have been into this since I was a child. Uh, so, uh, so for me personally, so for me personally, it's been around. But I certainly appreciate an organization taking it up and doing it, right? Uh, uh, and and I can wear it as a matter of pride to say my organization and my values on this are aligned. Uh, you know, so so that's 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 the matter of uh, you know. A choice that a leader makes in a company that I want to go down the path of being sustainable and conscious about all the stakeholders. Um, so if I hear you right, Swami, what you're basically saying is that, you know, here is a man who uh, walks the talk. No, absolutely. Yeah, he, he walks the talk in, in all these, I mean, he is, he is, uh, I mean, uh, I, I don't think there should be any doubt about walking the talk. I mean, uh, imagine what he's doing with this foundation. Imagine what he's doing, the impact he's making on uh, education. Uh, imagine what he's doing with the university. I mean, these are all path breaking in the Indian context, right? Uh, uh, there was no playbook for some of these things. He has pretty much written it all by himself. And uh, going back to his learning mindset, I guess, you know, he's willing to learn from anybody who's willing to tell him things that uh, uh, that he perhaps may not know 
so he would never act like he knows everything right so so if somebody goes and gives him a good idea he's willing to talk uh, he's willing to have those conversations that align with this broad agenda of very things uh, you know change in india can can happen so education is 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 really his passionate subject as as we all see I, i mean i know that there are many conversations where you know the client comes in and you know we don't talk business we talk about uh, how uh, uh, how mr prem ji's uh, focus on education uh, is uh, so relevant in the current context so the conversation goes in a very um you know different way really speaking so those are those are the kind of global impact i'm not talking about indian clients these are international clients that have uh, heard of his work and uh, you know uh, and actually would like to meet him in that context business happens to be yes, incidental in some cases there are some stories and some some stories from the uh, what kind of conversations would happen uh, would... uh no so you know see a, a good uh, us ceo today is on at least a couple of um, not for profit boards and you know they're trying to help and all of that right you see the resume of a lot of ceos they are they are doing their bit to you know be socially responsible and all of that uh, but you know i i, I mean I, again i am not in the inner circle really to have privy to some of that but i would assume that you know if 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 everybody in the world looks up to in the tech world looks up to say um uh let's say a bill gates you know uh, in the in the uh, the role that mr prem ji plays like a chairman of a big company but also doing a lot of work in the philanthropy area he is sort of the the titan in that space so people would like to you know spend time with him understand how he does it you know and he, and he does it reasonably method methodically right i know that uh, after he set up the fund uh, the philanthropic fund uh, one of the person in his team uh he said you know you going to go and find out how stanford how harvard and how these top universities manage their endowment funds i want you to go study that and here are the five people who will help you with that process right um and then uh, the person came back and you know it was a phenomenal learning for him as well because this has not been done in india right you, you, you can't talk to other people in india to get this perspective right so people are obviously willing to help him in that journey and in that process um so so that respect that he commands in that ecosystem is i guess uh, um you know uh, perhaps the first for an indian entrepreneur really you know a few of them have now uh, followed his path but at that time you know it wasn't very often that uh, uh the competitors so to say were writing books about themselves you know they were uh, they were doing things that were uh you know about something the company has done or something you know what they want to do but here was a man who is doing something else completely and the impact that he was talking about is like 20 30 years 40 years kind of impact right not one two quarter impact so that is that is the perspective <laughs> and the other the other story probably that also stayed with me you know i mean i i i recall one of the stories you uh, speaking about was you know right on the theme of philanthropy uh, was that uh, you know how do you get into philanthropy itself you know and yeah so, if, if you aim to be i think this is something uh, you should uh, you know I, i think i need a reminder on that one you know uh, see as i was mentioning earlier right every uh, see today you got to make use of the uh the benefits of capitalism in that sense and uh, you can be a philanthropist with no money in your pocket and you know that we spend so much time just trying to raise money you know you see you 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 talk to any ngos that are trying to do good work you know they spend a significant amount of leadership time uh, time trying to raise money uh because they don't have it themselves now you so if somebody like mr premji comes along and he says you know what i actually want to make this change and uh, you know i i can generate all of this myself uh, how do i do it you know so i got to build an enterprise that supports my cause so you run your business like you run a business you can't you can't mix the two really you know you got to fight for every deal that is out there you got to fight for every rupee you got to make sure that you are profitable you got to run it uh, by taking bets on businesses shutting down businesses we pro shut down many businesses right 
Um, and of course, we do have the history of how many CEOs have also been changed in the context of Wipro, right? Uh, it happens. And that's the, those are the tough calls you need to take when you need to run a business. So you do all of that. And at the end of the day, use the market dynamics to generate that wealth. And then uh, you can make an impact like what Mr. Premji has made, right? If you just set out to be a uh, philanthropist, uh, you know, you are a great man with a great vision, but nothing to back you up, right? Uh, I mean, it's like you don't get picked for the Indian cricket team because I have a great passion. You got to, you got to check some boxes. You got to, uh, you got to, uh, you, you got to have the wherewithal to, you know, uh, to generate that kind of, uh, uh, economic wealth for you to sustain yourself in the journey of uh, uh, philanthropy. And I think that's the playbook, really. I think if any entrepreneur wants to give back, you know, of course, Wipro employs a lot of people. It gives a lot by way of taxes. All of that is there as a running business. But uh, because he's also a majority shareholder, you know, he managed his, uh, uh, his affairs in such a way that he was able to uh, get the benefit of the successful business that he ran, plowed it back and then gave to philanthropy. And now, you know, as, as all legacies are, right, the philanthropic activities will far outlive the business that you once ran successfully, right? Uh, not to say that he didn't run a successful or an ethical business, but as you know, philanthropy and giving back has got a much more enduring um, um, charm and, uh, you know, quality to it, you know. So, I guess that way he's, he's reasonably well uh, aware of what it takes to be a philanthropist and not put the cart before the horse. Before you made money, you want to be a philanthropist, then, you know, it will remain a nice paper dream, right? I can also uh, aspire to be a great philanthropist, but you know where it's going to go. Right? Without, without wealth to back you up, you know, in the current context. You know, some of the challenges that he's taken on are very, uh, uh, it take a lot of time, education, in any context is a 15, 20 year horizon to understand what works, what doesn't work. And, you know, you go to the people in the foundation, they'll still say we are learning, you know, we still, they still haven't understood because India is like so diverse and so many different behaviors, all that requires money. So without it, you, you're never going to be able to, uh, successfully discover these things and, you know, put it to good use. Right. And uh, unlike other others, uh, you know, who have just only branded it as their philanthropic effort, he has worked behind the scenes with the government in many cases. So the work that you see may not be as evident, uh, but a lot of governments have benefited from the work the Premji Foundation is doing. I mean, I, again, this is based on some conversations I have had with the people who work in the foundation. So, uh, so you know. The, to that extent, you know, while he can say that, uh, you know, he was at the right place at the right time and he got lucky, but we do know that he worked really hard to put all these play pieces of the puzzle in place, including take some hard calls on businesses uh, at times on people, you know, uh, in order to get uh, the mix aligned so that he is, he's generated enough wealth to, su to sustain his first love, which I guess is philanthropy. So while on that, I think I, I think you know we have uh, had uh, major arguments on this, you know, on uh, going to the markets for instance, you know, and uh, you know should you stay, uh, uh, should you stay uh, private or should you go to the markets for instance? And if I if I recall right, I believe one of your uh, arguments has been that you should go to the markets, and that uh, to a large extent has been shaped by. Uh, Mr. Premji's uh, thinking, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, do you want to come in on that? I mean, uh, so this is this is my personal opinion, really. Uh, I don't know really how his inner circle thinks, but see, uh, he could have very well remained private because uh, you know, except for a few old holders in uh, uh, in interior Maharashtra who were who were holding shares, and I think some of them still do hold shares of Wipro when it was an oil refining company. Right, uh, he pretty much hold, held the entire company, but still he decided to float the company. Uh, still hold majority stake, but you know a lot of other investors came along. Um, so it it gives him two things, at least the way I I look at it. It gives him access to benchmarking with competition, uh, but more importantly, you know he can be questioned in a public forum. Right, he has a board of board of. Uh, 
um, uh, directors and he has shareholders and he is ready to stand up to that scrutiny now when you can safely be away from all of that you you deliberately want to expose yourself to that kind of scrutiny that talks about volumes about how you want to govern yourself right and it talks about uh, it, it it talks about the fact that everything that i want to do uh, is in the public domain um, and of course when you are in the pri- when you are in the public markets you know the, the financial rewards are also significant right it's only in the recent few uh, i would say 5 7 years that some of the private companies are seriously uh, highly valued you know that wasn't the case uh, you know when 20 years ago or uh, even perhaps 10 years ago right uh, so to get to get access to that kind of um, uh, capital you got to put yourself out there and uh, you got to take some risks you got to face scrutiny you do all of that and you have the benefits of uh, the hard work that you put in right um so i think th- th- those are those are absolutely the way you need to think about uh, creating wealth you know and there is no there is nothing wrong in aspiring to create wealth right because that's when you can give back uh, if you don't create wealth like i've said you know it's all in paper right so so i think those are uh, and so purely from our own journeys you know personal journey of being in entrepreneurship and all of that there are so many things that we can go back to in terms of how we look at a business how we look at frugality i do remember once i had to present a business case and i gave a break even of two years so he looked it all up i had a lot of people around me you know telling him about how this business is and why it is important and all of that he said yeah i i think all this makes sense but you know don't make the break even as two years break even in one year right you you break even in one year we are good to go right so for him that focus on getting that return uh, in on investment early is very important and you know you would think and say you know what this is a big company they have all the runway they can do i mean and i'm not asking for a lot of money uh, but no but when i and i was i was a bit uh, you know uh, I, I, i was i was not very comfortable with the fact that you know i had to break even in a year's time why why can't they take this for a by you know two years is what i'm asking for but when you step out and look at the world of entrepreneurship you know every day counts every year counts every couple of years is like your make or break is not you, you you pretty much can be dead right so when you start thinking on those lines you know uh, the the difference between one that creates value and one doesn't is to uh, is to actually keep those metrics very tight so that you are driving if you don't succeed fine you know the my risk is not very high right but i can move on to doing other things but here i don't want to commit like a 2 3 4 5 year horizon Uh, for an idea that may or may not work right so and that's exactly how we currently are thinking about entrepreneurship right uh, how do you especially when you are exploring new ideas right and and so that's very very helpful for an entrepreneur right so uh, frugality works the way the way the way we used to get reviewed the way uh, mr prem ji used to review the 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 different uh, businesses uh, you know the standardization of the formats all those are things that are unbelievably valuable if you are running business at scale you know and uh, uh, and and any entrepreneur who hasn't been down the path of uh, um, uh, seeing how to handle scale you got to have a stint and in a company like that right and no doubt if you just look around the indian indian and the international ecosystem there are many people who have worked in wipro gone on to be very very successful entrepreneurs you know in fact i read a, a Uh, um, i read a piece written by an ex cfo of wipro uh, who also said that when i walked in wipro was very entrepreneurial uh, you know uh, that's that's what i heard and that's what i saw and i can say that that's what i saw and that's what i experienced too you know um, so perhaps it was uh, uh, like i i recently read a title which says you know uh, we are a ceo factory right and uh, you know here is a company that generates ceos uh, here uh, well you can say you know you you might have your own perceptions of creating ceos but here is a company that creates entrepreneurs who end up becoming ceos of not just their ventures but several others so you know the contribution is substantial right um, of of uh, bringing in that mindset right so i think those are things that uh, you know driven by mr prem ji that happened across a lot of the employees and managers at the pro 
Interesting. You're very interesting perspective. So, uh, remind me, what was that uh, whole thing about the, you know, on a, on, a, on a very lighter note, what was that whole thing about the hair dye part, uh, you know? Uh, well, know, everyone would, uh, you know, dye their hair black. Uh, yeah, so we were always intrigued about how uh, his hair is so silverish, right? So, in fact, in one of our all hands meet in the Bay Area, I remember a person actually asking that question. Uh, Standing up and asking that question, Mr. Premji, how do you keep your hair so white? Okay, as opposed to you know, normally people would be dyeing it black or perhaps shades of that. Uh, but uh, I mean, he obviously didn't answer that question. But uh, the grapevine has it that he has uh, uh, he has a special process to keep it uh, white. Uh, you know, so um, so I, I guess he wanted to. Uh, I mean, and he's got a great personality to carry it off and uh, he looks very scholarly and very, um, you know, um, um, you know, like uh, uh, he, he, he's got, he's got, uh, he's got a very nice personality to carry it off. So I guess uh, that's what kept him, you know, focused on keeping his hair white um, through natural and uh, perhaps other means as well. How oh, very interesting. Now, now, before saying thank you to you, uh, Swami, uh, you know, since this is not a presentation, before saying thank you to you, uh, there is another uh, story that had, uh, I think, all of us in uh, split. Do you mind uh, sharing that uh, anecdote about uh, Mr. Fredji on the thank you and about that uh, whole narrative? Yeah, so again, it goes back to frugality, goes back to, you know, managing resources very tightly. So, uh, uh, we used to, uh, I mean, he, he was much more comfortable with printouts of very important presentations. So, uh, there were very specific ways in which the presentations have to be given to him. Uh, like it's two slides to a page, back to back printed. And we have to make sure that the thank you page is not printed because it's a uh, thank you page adds no value it's an additional printing cost and it is perhaps an additional paper. So uh, we have to be really careful. So it, this is, these are things that you hear uh, like, you know, uh, in the corridors, right? So you better be careful not to have a thank you page printed, you know? So at least uh, the presentations that I made uh, through my team, you know, uh, we used to take care of not having that slide in any of our, when we printed out, right, in any of our slides. So, you know, so attention to detail is like very, very high. And we begin all meetings with Mr. Premji with talking about Six Sigma in the company. So all Six Sigma projects would be reviewed first. Um, you know, so that's that's the way it is. So uh, he wants to, before all the interest wanes down and we are so, um, you know, tired at the end of the review, you know, he doesn't want to hear Six Sigma at that time. He wants to hear when you are fresh so that he could, uh, you know, he could, he could track the progress because he took it upon himself to say that, you know, we need to have a quality movement in the company. And I think he has uh, personally good rapport with folks at GE. So, you know, he's seen how that works. Um, so I guess that's what motivated him to, um, you know, build um, that as the first review items. And then there is a standard review process. I mean, uh, that uh, everybody in Wipro will know. I don't know whether it has changed now, but I'm talking about when he used to be very active in reviewing. Uh, you know, it's a very standard flow. You can't come in with, sorry, you can't come in with your own templates and start reviewing. So, yeah. Right. So now, at least now I know why is it that, you know, if, uh, I, I think you yelled at me once, you know, for uh, you know, putting one, uh, sending one presentation. Uh, I think I'd put some thank you slide there. Of course, it was not a printout to the digital version. And I think you have yelled at me and said, you know, Bhagav, what's the need for a thank you slide there? Or something to that extent. I don't know where it came from, but uh, now at least now I know. So I won't say. So I think I think we should not waste time on sending. Say, say thank you. So do you want to have the last words of me? Well, uh, I, I just want to wish uh, Mr. Premji a very very happy birthday, seventy five years old, and you know he's got many more years ahead of him. But his impact is certainly going to outlast him. So. I'm really thankful for the fact that he has taken up a topic like education, which I'm also very interested in, um, you know, and 
uh, and and the way they are going about it is 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 uh, so relevant for india there is nobody who's done as much work as uh, the foundation has done so um, hats off to him and uh, you know uh, we we are all um, the the managers and the leaders at wipro you know we have all been touched by him in so many ways in everything that we do uh as entrepreneurs as as business leaders you know uh, some of very obviously some of it not so obviously um like one of the one i, I want to give you one more thing uh, sure. uh, for all the all the leaders right he took he took a class this is i i've heard it from people who worked with him directly on this how to pack your bags when you have to put it without checking it in right so so that when you land at the airport you pick now your bags now i know now i know now you I pick know. your bag and you go How right you my so so i haven't directly been i haven't directly been uh, you know uh, uh, tutored by him on this but when somebody like that thinks about how to pack your bags right who am i not to think about it right so it certainly is there it's a very subconscious thing i would assume but yeah i i do take effort to pack my bags properly so that i don't need to check it in if i can <laughs> thanks obi yep okay see you guys thanks see you